Chapter 1071, Shedding Blood Like Water Thousands of pairs of eyes were all focusing on Tang Xiao at this moment. Figures flickered lightning fast towards him as he fell. Sect Master With a face full of worries, Mo A dashed to Tang Xiao's side. He didn't hesitate to take out a few holy healing pills and quickly stuffed them into Tang Xiao's mouth. Tang Xiao's complexion was pale as paper and his body was drenched with sweat. He struggled to squeeze out a smile while and said hoarsely, Help me sit. Carefully propping Tang Xiao up, Mo A then let him sit cross-legged on the ground. Then, he concernedly asked, Are you really okay, sect master? I lost nearly half of my blood, so it's a given that I'm now weak. Tang Xiao shook his head. But rest assured, though. Nothing will happen to my life. The blood ignition art was a terrifying secret art Tang Xiao created when he was in the immortal world. This secret art could be used in line with arrays, so he could kill enemies that were ten times stronger than him. It could turn the whole array into a solid melting furnace to melt all the lives inside it. At this moment, dozens of human experts rushed to Tang Xiao, the three nascent soul stage experts, Guan Mu Lin and Han Qing Wu, who stopped playing her zither. All of them heard Tang Xiao's remark and were extremely shocked complexions. They never thought that Tang Xiao would use such a method to kill demonic beasts, losing nearly half of his blood. For human beings, their blood was the most important before they ascended and became immortals. Only death awaited them should they lose too much blood. Duan Mu Lin slightly shivered. After kneeling beside Tang Xiao, he said with full respect on his face, I may not know what you've done, Tang Xiao. But I believe you did it for our country, for the sake of humanity as a whole. Thank you. Please take a rest and recuperate well. Just give us those demonic beasts to slaughter. We won't let you be killed as long as you're alive. Tang Xiao let out a vague smile wordlessly. His eyes, however, swept around and paused a second after they landed on Han Qingwu's face, who looked very worried. Everyone, I'll leave the rest to you for the time being. I need to recuperate first, so please do what you must do. After saying that, he directly shut his eyes and immersed himself into cultivation. Duan Mu Lin looked at Mo Ao and said in a deep voice, assign some people to protect Tang Xiao. We're going to slay those demonic beasts. But keep in mind that if you see that the situation is going south, immediately take Tang Xiao and leave this place. Rest assured. Mo Ao nodded and said, Sect Master's life is more important than mine. Suddenly, an exclamation came out from the crowd, Heaven! What just happened? How come the array in front is burning? In that instant, everyone's eyes shifted to the demons and immortals slaughtering array. The scene of the array gradually turning scarlet shocked them the most. It was like it had turned into a gigantic melting pot. Even the thousands of cultivators could hear the howling and screams of the tens of thousands of demonic beasts. Han Qingwu had a distressed look in her eyes. Then, she vaguely said, it's because of the blood ignition art activated in line with the heaven and earth array. Once both activate at the same time, it will burn down all the enemies inside the array completely, unless they are strong enough to escape. However, those who cast this blood ignition art must force out a huge amount of their blood to be condensed into blood essence, which will create a harming backlash and leave the caster in a very weak condition. He, he just used, his life to slay those demonic beasts. Duan Mu Lin and the three nascent soul stage experts, as well as nearly 100 other cultivators around, gasped in cold breath and turned to look at her. Duan Mu Lin walked a few steps towards Han Qingwu and said, Thank you for lending a hand a while ago, Miss Han. If anything, if Tang Xiao's condition is not very good, could you help him? Han Qingwu shook her head and interrupted him with a bit of bitterness on her face and tone. I have no way to help him. Even if I do, I'm afraid he won't let me help him. Huh? Duan Mu Lin frowned and asked, Why? Aren't you two very close? Deep love and concern were on Han Qingwu's face as she shot a deep gaze at Tang Xiao. 
Then, she streaked into the sky for several hundreds of meters, sat cross-legged midair, put the zither on her lap and began playing it again to affect the demonic beasts inside the demons and immortals slaughtering array. Fuck. Archfiend Rupture furiously roared again and again. It had been seriously affected since it rushed into the array. Originally, it intended to kill Tang Xiao with its own power and destroy this array. But not only did it fail to kill him, but it also pushed itself into this pit instead. But what made him furious the most was the deaths of countless demonic beasts. Run. Escape. The other two demonic beasts who were comparable to the nascent soul stage experts shouted right after Archfiend Rupture. They could tell they wouldn't be able to break this array with their powers, neither would they be able to rescue all their kin. They even sensed a very strong crisis looming over them. As if sensing that this furnace-like array would send them right into hell once it blew up. Archfiend Rupture let out several furious roars. Yet, it couldn't help realizing that it wouldn't be able to break this array. As a sense of crisis loomed, with its high intelligence, it eventually thought that escaping was the best choice. Divides. Displaying another supernatural power, more than 100 of its shadows appeared in an instant as they grabbed tens of golden core stage demonic beasts. At the same time, the other two nascent soul stage demonic beasts gathered. Countless black holes then appeared in an instant, while a black chain bombarded a certain spot and tore an opening in the array. Eventually, the battered two nascent soul stage demonic beasts and the tens of golden core stage ones escaped from the demons and immortals, slaughtering array. Boom. A huge power blasted out from the demons and immortal slaughtering array. The explosion looked like a mushroom cloud that spread in all directions. Tens of thousands of demonic beasts trapped inside it met their cruel deaths along with the blast, leaving only their demon cores on the ground. In a flash, Tang Xiao, who was previously sitting cross-legged on the blockade line, opened his eyes. His eye lit up and he had recovered his ability to move after a short recovery. He quickly dashed into the tens of meters deep and tens of kilometers wide large pit. His chi swept over and quickly gathered all the demon cores and stored them into his interspatial ring. That was. Thousands of human cultivators were scared shitless, including the three strongest nascent soul stage experts. They were staring dumbly, tongue-tied as they saw the dreadful scene in front. They could only watch Tang Xiao's continuous flashing figure with gasping breaths. It was all too terrifying. Although they didn't know how many demonic beasts had entered this array, the power of the explosion from the array was so great that it sent a tsunami of dread into their hearts. After half a minute, Tang Xiao had sucked all the demon cores into his interspatial ring. After he sensed its inside, he counted 45,620 demon cores, which meant that he had paid a grievous cost, yet had successfully slain 45,620 demonic beasts. It should be half of them, give or take. Feeling satisfied, Tang Xiao nodded. Then, he turned and flew towards Duan Mu Lin and smilingly said in a clear voice, Nearly half of the demonic beasts have been slain by me, Senior Duan Mu. However, all the arrays I've arranged here have been destroyed. I'm afraid we must face them head on next. You said you successfully killed nearly half of demonic beasts called out Duan Mu Lin in surprise. His pupils shrunk and he asked, how many of them, exactly? 45,620, answered Tang Xiao. What? This time, it wasn't only Duan Mu Lin who got shocked, but also the rest of the cultivators. There were still some people who didn't flinch at the moment, and Han Xing Gu was undoubtedly one of them. She and Tang Xiao lived together for thousands of years so she naturally knew how powerful the might unleashed by the array aided by the blood ignition art was. Back in the past, Tang Xiao had once pursued an evil race and billions of them were all killed by this method. It was a pity that his current strength was very weak. Compared to power he possessed in his heyday, his current power was but only one ten thousandth. He would have easily obliterated these demonic beasts and the Himalayas itself otherwise absolutely disgraceful. 
suddenly, a furious roar came from the depths of the Himalayas. The figure of Blood Fiend Monarch flickered and moved lightning fast. It then instantly appeared in the air over the deep pit. A blob of black flames was spat out from its mouth and instantly blew over to the thousands of humans in front. Block it. Tang Xiao's complexion drastically changed. A chill filled his heart as he could sense the power of Blood Fiend Monarch from its aura. Its power was, comparable with a body integration stage expert. It seems like the only option left is to have the Star Devourer Insect Act. Tang Xiao sighed inwardly but then shook his head the moment after. Just as he was about to release Star Devourer Insect, a huge aura suddenly came from Ugly Town. Further, the intense high temperature seemed to light up the earth, and the snow tens of kilometers around it began to melt rapidly. Another demonic beast? It was a fire chilean with three-storied building high scarlet body and fire all over its body. It flashed in the sky over the blockade line while unleashing its flame to meet the demonic flame head-on. The dreadful blast of energy made all the cultivators present scared shitless as they were forced to retreat toward Ugly Town. Tang Xiao followed the rest back to the sky above Ugly Town. His eyes were fixated at the fire chilling fighting the blood fiend monarch with a bizarre expression on his face. He remembered this fire chilean clearly. Back when he was adventuring with Miao Wendong and Xiao Mingxin to find some treasures, they snatched quite a lot of precious ores from this fire chilean nest in the underground labyrinth. This thing, isn't it trapped in that underground labyrinth? How the hell did it come out and why does it side with humans against that dreadful demonic beast? Chapter 1072, Teaming Up Miao Wendong and Xiao Mingxin both appeared silently next to Tang Xiao. Both of them wore similarly strange expressions and looked at Tang Xiao with inquisitive eyes. You guessed it right, guys. That's that fire chilean, whispered Tang Xiao. It's just I never thought this guy was so powerful. It didn't seem it wanted to kill us then, else we'd have died in its hand no matter how fast we ran. Well, could it be that the natural array outside the underground labyrinth was broken, asked Miao Wenong in a whisper. How could it come out, then? My guess is that natural array didn't trap it, but instead has been used by this thing to block outsiders from entering the underground space to enter its nest, answered Tang Xiao. However, although its strength is powerful, it is just on par with that demonic beast and even slightly weaker. Miao Wintong's complexion changed and he hurriedly asked, Then what should we do? That fire Chilin suddenly appeared here. It's like our savior, you know. If it can't slay that dreadful demonic beast, we're as good as dead already. Tang Xiao fell into silence for a while. Then, he suddenly looked at Han Qingwu and said in a deep voice, If you don't want to die, join me in helping that fire Chilin. We can only survive by killing that demonic beast. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Han Qingwu directly nodded. Brows slightly scrunched up, Tang Xiao immediately sat cross-legged and arranged the spiritual energy gathering array with 36 demon cores. He then began to communicate with the stars in the universe and frantically absorbed astral power. The fight between the Fire Chilin and Blood Fiend Monarch could only be said as dreadful. Their battlefield started at the blockade line to the depths of the Himalayas. Cultivators with weak cultivation levels were simply unable to judge which one was stronger or weaker. However, what made them rejoice was that the fire chilean came right at the time the crisis was going to befall upon them, for they knew that they would have died already otherwise. Whoosh! 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 Four figures flickered lightning fast from the distance. As they appeared in the blink of an eye around Tang Xiao's spot, Tang An's figure then emerged before she disappeared, while Tang Guan, Chi Nan, and Kawako quickly looked at Tang Xiao. What happened to Grand Master, M.O.O.? Tang Guang immediately asked while looking at Tang Xiao, who was covered in blood and sitting cross-legged. Sovereign used an array to kill tens of thousands of demonic beasts, but it made him seriously injured, answered M.O.O. He's now seizing the time to heal and restore his power. But he doesn't have any other major problem, right? asked Tang Guang hurriedly. 
there shouldn't be any. Moo shook his head and said, Sect Master will be back to his prime condition as long as there's more time. The rest around Tangguang secretly let out a sigh of relief after hearing it. At this moment, Duan Mu Lin dashed towards Tang Xiao. He had discovered that tens of thousands of demonic beasts were quickly advancing towards them. Whoosh! Shui Yu then appeared out of nowhere and blocked Duan Mu Lin's path as she said faintly, Senior Duan Mu, Tang Xiao is currently recuperating, so please don't bother him. Her emergence shocked Duan Mu Lin. She literally appeared like a ghost. After halting his pace, he calmly observed her and then immediately asked in surprise, How, did you become this powerful? Shouldn't you? Ah. Uh. Don't tell me Tang Xiao also taught you some skills? How I became this powerful is not your business, is it, Senior Duanmu, replied Shuiyu faintly. If the news is correct, you should be the commander in this operation to fight these demonic beasts, yes? Now that we're fighting the horde of demonic beasts, don't you just need to fight them? We got too many demonic beasts, that's why. Duanmu Lin forced a smile and said, Tang Xiao killed tens of thousands of them, but we can't face them with the overall strength of the human cultivators. That's why I came here quickly. I just want to ask whether Tang Xiao can arrange another array to aid us in killing them. As I said, he's recuperating now, so I don't care about any of your problems. Shuiyu shook her head and said, Please wait until he himself comes to see you. But this. Duanmu Lin hesitated for a moment. But he finally sighed before turning around and leaving. Shuiyu paced forward and came flying to Tang Xiao's side. She then took out an exquisite jade box from her interspatial ring, put it in front of Tang Xiao, then softly said while standing, Sis Yen gave me this essence soul condensing pill. She said it would be helpful to you. Tang Xiao opened his eyes and felt ecstatic inwardly. The essence soul condensing pill was a great elixir even in the immortal world. Not only did it have a great effect on improving one's spiritual sense with the cultivation below the immortal stage, but taking it could also make one advance directly and greatly increase their strength rapidly. This came in the time of need, indeed. He opened the jade box and quickly took out the pill from the inside. After taking it, he shut his eyes and absorbed it to refine the efficacy. After ten minutes, he woke up from his cultivation once again. After opening his eyes, he saw the blood fiend monarch bombarding the fire Chilin's huge body, sending it to fly upside down. While Duan Mu Lin and thousands of human cultivators were in an intense fight with demonic beasts on the ground. Fortunately, disciples of Tang sect were forming a sword formation and constantly resisting the attacks of demonic beasts. Their efforts prevented the rest of human cultivators to retreat and didn't become the slaughter feast of those demonic beasts. Shui Yu, Han Xingguo, you both will come with me to help that fire Chilin. The rest of you, go slay those demonic beasts. But do pay attention to those demonic beasts at the spirit formation and nascent soul stages. Whoosh. 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 Three figures flew toward Blood Fiend Monarch. Tang Xiao was quite lucky after taking the essence soul condensing pill. Not only had he recovered from his injuries, but his spiritual sense had also greatly improved and he also made a breakthrough in his cultivation, advancing to the third level of Star's Heavenly Essence stage. The only thing that puzzled him was that he hadn't yet obtained any divine abilities to cast astral power whatsoever, even though he had advanced to the third level. To the nascent soul stage seniors, please help the rest to slay those demonic beasts. Ah, oh, you also join them. Tang Xiao shouted the moment he attacked the blood fiend monarch. Kill. Kill. The chaotic battle ensued and everyone was fighting at close quarters. The flowing blood created streams and the ground was littered with corpses. The horrifying sight would have made the average people be scared to death should they witness it. As Tang Xiao saw Han Qingwu and Shuiyu fly to attack Blood Fiend Monarch, he swept his hand and rushed towards a snowy peak in the blink of an eye. He instantly sent a wave of qi to wrap the fire Qilin and pulled it up from above. 
I'd like to thank you for not killing me then, Fire Chilin. That particular demonic beast is very terrible. I'm afraid you're not its opponent if you fight it by yourself. Let's team up to slay it and get rid of this disaster, said Tang Xiao aloud. The Fire Chilin itself seemed to recognize Tang Xiao. It let out a cold snort and directly transmitted its thought to Tang Xiao using spiritual sense. You snatched quite a lot of things from me then, brat. I don't want you to return them now, but I want half of the demon cores from these damn demonic beasts. Uh. Demon cores are too important for me now, Fire Chilin. Tang Xiao retorted. Half of them is too much. How about one fifth? I'll give you a fifth of demon cores to make up for my previous deeds, okay? Nope. A third. The fire Chilin haggled. Tang Xiao was silent for a moment. Then, he gritted his teeth and said, Fine. I'll give you a third of the demon cores. But you must answer a question. How do you know that each of those demonic beasts has a demon core? And what do you want to do with them? I used to be an immortal beast in the immortal world, so I naturally know that these demonic beasts have demon cores, answered Fire Chilin. If anything, Earth has no immortal stone, nor even any piece of energy crystal. I want to arrange an array to go back to the immortal world, and I'm short of useful things for that. Those demon cores can replace immortal stones. You can arrange an array to return to the immortal world from Earth, asked Tang Xiao in amazement. The fire Chilin nodded. But then it shook its head shortly after. It sent its thought to Tang Xiao's mind once again, there's a spatial array on Earth, but it's damaged, so I need to patch it. However, it's been so many years, so I have no idea if it can be repaired. An ecstatic look flashed on Tang Xiao's face. He then said in a deep tone, I'll help you repair that spatial teleportation array later. Rest assured, I'm quite an expert in arrays myself. Only a few immortals in the immortal world are better than me in this aspect. All right, let's spare the talk and let's join forces to kill those demonic beasts, shall we? The fire Chilin didn't hesitate and flung itself towards the blood fiend monarch. However, it sent its thought again to Tang Xiao's mind, you can't kill this thing, you can only seal it. This demonic beast is very strong, it isn't just as simple as being at the body integration stage. If my guess is correct, this guy is in the same situation as me and his actual cultivation should have reached the perfected golden immortal stage. Hiss. Tang Xiao gasped in cold air. If the fire Chilin was correct, then it would be very difficult to kill it. But this guy is a disaster, so we have no choice but to slay it, fire Chilin. But rest assured, though. I have the means to slay it if we can injure it heavily. Tang Xiao transmitted his answer to the fire Chilin right as he was about to sprint towards the blood fiend monarch. Great. The fire Chilin didn't speak anymore and unleashed various kinds of divine abilities. It teamed up with Tang Xiao, Han Qingguo, and Shui Yu to mount heavy strikes against Blood Fiend Monarch. Although Tang Xiao had just broken through again and now was barely on par with an early stage spirit formation cultivator, the combined power of him, Han Qingguo, and Shui Yu was still slightly weaker. However, with the addition of these three, Blood Fiend Monarch was immediately suppressed. While that particular spirit formation stage demonic beast wanting to help the latter, it was getting entangled and pestered by the three nascent soul stage human experts. Time fleeted by and Bloodfiend Monarch was badly battered after two hours. Its aura was getting weaker by the seconds. Tang Xiao, Han Qingguo, and Shui Yu themselves had consumed most of their powers and their true essence energy would likely be unable to last much longer. Han Qingwu used Zither Melody of Heavenly Demon. Just as Tang Xiao dodged a fierce blow from Blood Fiend Monarch, he immediately fell back and instantly appeared next to Han Qingwu. The latter complied, the moment the Fire Chilin and Shui Yu attacked Blood Fiend Monarch once again, she suddenly retreated some kilometers away and directly played her Zither in midair. She owed Tang Xiao a great deal in the past and kept loving him until the present, which led her to be very obedient. 
Chapter 1073 Annihilation The zither melody of heavenly demon was a dreadful art to confuse the mind and create illusions. During the fight, Tang Xiao realized that even though this demonic beast had a powerful mental power, it was still suppressed by the rules of this plane and became very weak. With such a condition, it was better to use Han Qinwu's zither melody of heavenly demon to influence it. As expected, the movements of Blood Fiend Monarch were considerably slowed down. It must be noted that a slight carelessness in a battle between powerhouses was enough to make one meet their demise. Blood Fiend Monarch's speed was slowed down and its strength was weakened, even though it desperately struggled to shake its head to shake off the zither melody that invaded its mind. Boom! The fire Chilin opened its mouth. A red bullet that was as though a scorching sun was shot out and exploded as it hit the blood fiend monarch. As the demonic beast wailed, Shuayu brandished her immortal sword and tore a bloody wound on its back. The wound was very serious and made blood fiend monarch almost fall to the ground. Ancestral Reverse of Myriad Swords Controlling the Divine Sword, Tang Xiao unleashed thousands of sword shadows and shot all of them toward Blood Fiend Monarch's body. As the Fire Chilin looked shocked, he pierced Blood Fiend Monarch's body and left hundreds of bleeding wounds. Roar! Blood Fiend Monarch looked desperate, for it never dreamed that someone could pierce its body only by relying on a sword. One must note that it had formed a layer of defensive shield inside its body that even top-grade immortal swords without strong power, to manipulate it wouldn't be able to pierce its body. That sword. Blood fiend monarch though in the midst of its wails. Then, it instantly turned around and bolted toward the depths of the Himalayas. But after it ran away for more than 10 kilometers, its aura suddenly dissipated and its body fell to the ground. Huh? That guy died just like that? The fire Chilin just stared dumbly at the body of Blood Fiend Monarch that fell on the ground. Its figure flickered a few times and appeared next to the corpse. Tang Xiao was grinning. He had appeared in front of Blood Fiend Monarch's corpse a step ahead. He kept slashing his divine sword and cut Blood Fiend Monarch's corpse into eight parts, all of which were then stuffed into his interspatial ring. The fire chilling angrily glared at Tang Xiao and growled. Give me the demon core of this demonic beast. Nope. You're using demon cores to patch the array, yes? Tang Xiao shook his head and said, I can help you with that. But demon cores are very important to me, so I can't give you this one either. If anything, your only purpose is to repair the spatial teleportation array and return to the immortal world. Am I right? Hmph. <laughs> That's right. I want to go back to the immortal world. The fire Chilin snorted. I've been trapped on Earth for tens of millenniums already. I'm going crazy here. I give you my word that you can leave freely if you can patch that spatial teleportation array. Tang Xiao said, but I still have another means to take you back to the immortal world even if your attempt fails. However, I still need a longer time. Could be a decade or two. You have a way to go to the immortal world, the fire chilling was surprised and asked, how do you do it, exactly? I can ascend to the immortal world if I succeed in crossing my tribulation, said Tang Xiao. By then, I naturally have the means to bring many people to the immortal world. The fire chilling gave Tang Xiao a deep stare. Then, it nodded and said, I'll take your word this time. But I hope you don't let me down. I've waited for tens of millenniums, I couldn't care less to wait for more for a decade or two. If you really can bring me back to the immortal world, then I won't bother with those demon cores. Deal, answered Tang Xiao immediately. Demon cores were too important for him since he would need more resources the more he advanced in cultivation. If he could get himself nearly 100,000 demon cores, he was sure that he could have continuous breakthroughs smoothly and finally reach a cultivation level that was on par with experts. At the immortal stage. Please lend your hand to help the human cultivators kill the rest of these demonic beasts then, fire Chilin. We still got tons of them here, so let's kill more of them, lest the other human cultivators die, Tang Xiao said as he turned to look at the direction of Ugly Town. 
fine. The fire chilin itself was actually indifferent. However, it was thanks to Tang Xiao and the others that it could kill that particular demonic beast. With the fire chilin, Tang Xiao, Han Qingwu, and Shui Yu lending a hand, the tide of the battle where the human side was originally suppressed instantly changed. Han Qingwu used her zither melody to attack, whereas Tang Xiao and Shui Yu were just literally everywhere in the battlefield, unceasingly reaping the lives of those demonic beasts. Fire Chilin was even more brutal. It was simply like a tiger preying on a flock of sheep, leaving nowhere else for the demonic beasts to escape but to be killed by it. After a whole day, the battle in the Himalayas barely came to an end. Nearly 50,000 of the originally 100,000 demonic beasts' horde died, leaving only 5,000 survivors. The surviving ones ran away and hid in the depths of the Himalayas without a trace. Likewise, the human side also suffered huge casualties. The number of cultivators surviving was only 800 from the previous several thousand, 100 of whom were now disabled and 200 more were gravely injured. At the temporary encampment, Duan Mu Lin called all the leaders of the various forces. Although he was very sad and similarly seriously injured, he just ignored his own condition. Everyone, we have wiped out the horde of those demonic beasts and there are only a few thousands of them left in hiding. We can't find them now, and neither do we have the means to kill them for the time being. Hence, I want to ask everyone's opinion. Should we stay here, going deep into the Himalayas, or continue chasing the surviving demonic beasts? The horde of demonic beasts has been wiped out. The remaining few thousands of them have also hidden, and it won't be easy to track them in the depths of the Himalayas. Further, I still have tons of things to tend to, so the Tang sect disciples won't be staying here. Tang Xiao shook his head and said, if anything, I think tracking those demonic beasts and killing them would be quite easy for the cultivation world's friends, given their abilities. Duan Mu Lin slightly furrowed his brows and forced a wry smile inwardly. Of everyone here, the people he hoped the most to stay and help him kill demonic beasts were Tang Xiao and the Tang Sex disciples. Yet, he also knew Tang Xiao's character. It was nearly impossible for him to change his mind once he made it up. Therefore, he could only helplessly say, well, you can go then. The rest of those demonic beasts shouldn't pose too much of a threat to us as long as they don't mount a large-scale attack. All right. Just inform me at once if such a situation arises, said Tang Xiao. Duan Mu Lin wordlessly nodded. Then, he asked the rest of the other forces' leaders. After his pleading, most of the cultivation forces were willing to stay to help kill the remaining demonic beasts. Even the nascent soul stage ancestress of the whole unitary sect expressed her willingness to stay. She would stay here until all the demonic beasts had been completely eliminated. In the dim night, Tang Xiao led 192 disciples of the Tang sect out of Ugly Town. Tang Xiao didn't accept any rewards although the Tang sect disciples had made great contributions this time. He had to go back to Nine Dragons Island and spend some time into seclusive cultivation. A minute after they left, four or five figures silently appeared. They looked at the direction the group was leaving with a look of respect on their faces. Director Duanmu, I think it would have been extremely difficult for us to win this war had it not been for Tang Xiao. The middle-aged Taoist nun heavily sighed. What you said is true enough. Tang Xiao did make a great contribution. Duanmu Lin nodded and continued, unfortunately, he also has a high status and a prominent background. Plus, he doesn't like to be famous. He said that it instead just brings him great inconvenience rather than being helpful. The amiable-looking old man slowly said, being indifferent to fame and fortune and only seeking the path to immortality. Daoist Tang is still very young, yet he already has such formidable strength. It's really shocking. I'm really curious about this Tang sect now, though. How can a cultivator sect train so many peerless geniuses? I advise you to avoid any thoughts of investigating the Tang sect, Elder. Duan Mu Lin shook his head and said, Tang Xiao will be hostile to you otherwise once he finds out about it. 
The amiable-looking old man shook his head and smilingly said, No worries. I won't send people to investigate the Tang sect, though I'm very curious about it. Besides, that sect has two spirit formation stage experts. Such a force is already surpassing the other cultivator forces, to begin with. I may be old, but I still have a good brain. Having a conflict with Tang Xiao is the last thing I want. Noon of the next day, Tang Xiao and the Tang sect's disciples arrived on Jingmen Island. Since he didn't want to expose Nine Dragons Island, he temporarily stationed everyone on the headquarters, the Manor of Everlasting Feast Hall, after returning. Grand Master Tang and silently appeared at Tang Xiao's side and respectfully reported. We've done our investigation. We have six groups of people on our tail. Except for the origins of two groups we have no knowledge about, we've already found out the four others. All of them come from some cultivator clans. But they seem to have no malicious intent towards us. Those superior are prone to blasphemy and destruction. Tang Shou sneered. Our Tang sect disciples have performed so well in this crisis, so naturally they will garner the attention of other cultivation forces. It's just human nature for them to send their people to tail us. Yet, that's why we must stay low-key. Should we kill those tracking us, then, asked Tang and after hesitating. No. Just let them be. Tang Xiao shook his head and said, Those surviving cultivators are heroes of mankind, to begin with. We'll ignore them as long as Nine Dragons Island is not exposed. Tang In, tell Tang Guang to drive them away. As you will it, Grand Master. Tang In complied and disappeared in a flash. Suddenly, a wind gently pushed the door of Tang Xiao's residence. A smile on her face, Shuiyu appeared in front of Tang Xiao. She had been in seclusion and felt like it was like a century for her. Although her strength improved day by day, she had always missed Tang Xiao's hug every time she faced a crisis. Even though she finally met Tang Xiao, there was no time to be with him due to the demonic beast's issue. She had been barely able to endure it. I miss you, you know that? Shuiyu opened her arms and hugged Tang Xiao's waist. Tang Xiao could feel her true feelings and was slightly feeling touched. He smiled and hugged her. Anyways, did Yen bully you? I never thought she'd make you experience that array. Ah. Uh. No, no, replied Shuiyu hurriedly. She's been very good to me. I wouldn't have been able to help you in this demonic beast issue otherwise. Chapter 1074, Stopping by Jingmen Island Tang Xiao let out a warm smile as he looked at Shuiyu's delicate face. Affection toward Shuiyu had grown inside him ever since she had shed her shyness and got along with him until now. Such a warm and emotional feeling made him feel very comfortable inside. A man may encounter misfortune, yet it may be an actual blessing. Tang Xiao turned and walked to the window. As he looked at the beautiful shade of trees and bouquets of flowers outside, he couldn't help but sigh when a beautiful face suddenly came to his mind. After Shuiyu followed and stood next to him, she asked with an odd expression, What do you mean? It's nothing. Tang Xiao smiled and shook his head. Just something in the past not worth mentioning. Anyways, can I ask you something? And you must answer it seriously. Nodding with a thoughtful look, Shuiyu said, just ask. I'll answer you truthfully. Although you've now broken through to the spirit formation stage and are one of the best experts on earth, there's something I'd like to ask you about our future. Tang Xiao asked, do you really want to be just a woman by my side? Or the one who shares weal and woe with me in the campaign against the world? That's a very easy question to answer, actually. Shuiyu suddenly stretched out a smile and replied, I'll always be with you wherever you go. I won't be just a woman who'll cook and wash your clothes, but I'll also accompany you to face your enemies. I just don't want to, to be at a loss whenever you're in danger. Tang Xiao reached out to grab her fragrant shoulder, hugging her and whispering, since you chose the second option, then please help me train the children soldiers once we're back to the Nine Dragons Island. 
I hope you can train a lot of foundation establishment and golden core stage experts in the next few years. Shuiyu nodded and her eyes suddenly lit up. The surviving demonic beasts in the Himalayas likely won't be exterminated completely anytime soon. If they are in hiding and breeding, their number may increase in the future. Since you want me to train those children, it'd be better for me to pick out the elites and take them into the depths of the Himalayas. I just realized from the training Yen gave me that one can only be truly strong after going through dangerous battles. If anything, it won't be only those demonic beasts in the depths of the Himalayas, but also the battlefields all over the world. Tang Xiao smiled and added, I want the shadow of the Tang sect to be present in any wars that occur in the future. I can't manage to handle it myself since my hands are full with too many issues I need to deal with this year. Not to mention that I need to carry out a big move starting next year. I want our Tang sex strength to multiply by then, that even those big three organizations in the world must yield and retreat. A big move. What is it? asked Shui Yu. Let's save that for later. You can see it soon enough, replied Tang Xiao with a mystifying smile. Shui Yu no longer asked. She had decided to support any decisions Tang Xiao made. She wouldn't hesitate to follow him even if he told her that he wanted to be the king of the world. Knock, knock. The door was knocked and Kawako's voice was heard outside the door. It's me, Kawako, boss. Shui Yu turned and walked to the door. After opening it, she saw Kawako standing straight outside in a black leather attire that highlighted her fine figure and showcased her delicate, beautiful face. Added with her long black hair, she looked very vigorous and valiant. Lady Boss After witnessing Shuiyu's power, deep respect had grown in Kawako's heart towards her. The other reason why she was this respectful was that she also knew that Shuiyu was Tang Xiao's woman. Tang Xiao is inside if you want to chat, said Shuiyu with a smile. After watching Shuiyu leave, Kawako then entered the room. As she came behind Tang Xiao, she respectfully spoke, Boss Missouri Ao said you're looking for me? Tang Xiao turned around and looked at her, and couldn't help but praise. Well, I never thought you'd advance to the Golden Core stage this fast. I took you in back then as a subordinate, and originally intended to make you handle some issues for me as well as to secure cultivation resources from Japan. But now, it seems like I must cast away my previous intention. You're a talented woman, and I always need talented people. Inwardly, Kawako was secretly glad to receive the notification of Tang Xiao's summon. Back when she received the notice to leave for China, she still felt that she was already very strong and was likely not far from Tang Xiao, even feeling confident that she would surpass him soon. But the battle in the Himalayas struck her with a realization that the chasm between her and Tang Xiao was not narrowed, but became bigger instead. Such a discovery made her finally realize that Tang Xiao's strength was far more than she could reach. Not only that, even the number of powerful subordinates under him was something that she could only look up to. It was the reason that she had a change of mind and completely submitted to Tang Xiao. She dared not to show dissent and disloyalty anymore. Other than that, after she learned that Tang Xiao found Tang sect and became its first sect master, she was full of expectation inwardly hoping that she'd become a Tang sect disciple and his true confidant. At this moment, she had a vague feeling that her wish would be granted. I have my own way of managing my men. Tang Xiao continued, the strong will rise and the weak will fall. I don't care about anyone's origin. As long as you possess powerful strength, you'll gain my trust to handle important positions as well as having prominent status in the Tang sect. I already declared that the first six people who advance to the Golden Core stage will become the guardian elders of the Tang sect. You're Japanese, but I hold no prejudice against you. So, I'll allow you to join the Tang sect and become its true disciple from now henceforth. Further, you're to be a guardian elder of the Tang sect, so any disciple who sees you must salute you with respect. In addition, you also have the right to receive the allocated cultivation resources for guardian elders annually. An ecstatic look appeared on Kawako's face. 
she directly kneeled on one knee, placing her right fist on the left chest, and respectfully said, Thank you, boss. Sect Master. It was you who gave me my life and you're also the person who taught me cultivation, which is the reason I'm so powerful now. You've been helping me in becoming a great personage in Japan as well. I, Kawako, vow that my life is yours from now on. I'm willing to sacrifice everything for you. Tang Xiao squinted his eyes and he could sense the sincerity from her eyes. After gently nodding in response, he propped her up and said, Do keep in mind what I just told you today. I expect the day when you break through to the spirit formation stage in the future. You'll follow me to leave Earth and step on the vaster stage. I will also remove the seal I cast on you before. Further, if you can advance to the nascent soul stage quicker, I'll treat you as my right hand later and entrust you the seat of an important position. Kawako's countenance slightly changed and she hurriedly asked, Boss. Sect Master, you just said you're going to take me to leave Earth? Where to, exactly? A meaningful look filled Tang Xiao's eyes as he responded, Earth is just a speck of dust in the universe in my eyes, and so is this plane. Kawako, that world is much bigger and far further than you can imagine. It's located in the midst of the vast expanse of stars with countless worlds inhabited by myriad races, as well as innumerable powerhouses. That place will be my battlefield in the future, so if you are resolute to follow me and want to see that broader world, you must fight alongside me and blaze your way out to be a great figure in that universe. You mean, there are, like, other places and countless human beings in this universe besides Earth's? Kawako Yamamoto asked in confirmation, amazed. If anything, mankind is only a tiny part of them. Tang Xiao sported a smile and said, you can expect to find myriads of races and countless powerhouses there. Anyways, let's drop it off first. You won't be able to imagine what I just told you. Just strive to advance to the spirit formation stage. Only then will you qualify to leave with me to be a hegemon there. Only then will you have the chance to fight against the world and become an existence that countless powerhouses of myriads of races will look up to. A brilliant light shone in Kawako's eyes. Her heartbeat turned a few times faster and louder upon hearing it. As an ambitious woman, the vision portrayed by Tang Xiao aroused her fighting spirit. Don't tell me Sect Master originally comes from that place? Such a thought suddenly popped up in Kawako's mind. Tang Xiao then handed her an interspatial ring with a smile. Drip a drop of your blood on it, and then use your spiritual sense to check it. There are cultivation resources inside as your reward. You can look at them slowly and take them back. Don't go back to Japan for now, head to the Tang Sex Holy Land with me to cultivate there for a while instead. Understood, replied Kawako Yamamoto respectfully. Is there something urgent you need to deal with in Japan soon, though? asked Tang Xiao. Kawako looked hesitated and then answered, Well, I've been preparing to take a big a chance recently. If this plan were to work out, I'd become the patriarch of House Yamamoto, as well as the schoolmaster of North Star One Blade School. All of which will make my status there greatly elevated. Also, the business I've personally been managing has invested in a lot of investments which will yield much bigger profits in the future, once they succeed. Tang Xiao squinted his eyes and shot a deep look at her. Then, he smiled and said, If so, then I'll allow you to pick ten children after you have arrived at our Tang Sex Holy Land. They will become your right-hand people in the future. After you're done with your cultivation on Nine Dragons Island later, you can take them back with you to Japan to handle some issues for you. Uh... Children, muttered Kawako with a confused face. Well, don't ask more about that first. Tang Xiao smiled and said, You'll know about it after you come to our sex nine dragons island. Go now. We'll be staying here for two days and we'll leave after. Acknowledged. Kawako left the room and closed the door from the outside. Tang Xiao shifted his sight back to the window and pondered over some issues in silence. He had exposed the existence of the Tang sect because of the incident with the demonic beasts, 
as well as the fact that he had a lot of experts under him. Although the Tang sect's power could deter some people, it would undoubtedly make some others guard against and be wary of him. It also made him analyze the current situation related to Duan Mu Lin and the Special Abilities Bureau. Now that this agency had lost many ability users, Duan Mu Lin had begun to recruit some cultivators with no affiliation in the country to fill in the vacancy in the agency. If the country, which was represented by Duan Mu Lin, started to be wary of him, it'd be likely that it would become quite troublesome in the future. Chapter 1075 The Sex Secret History Be it in his previous and present life, Tang Xiao was quite adept at analyzing things. After returning and living on Earth, his EQ and the ways he responded to people's intentions and conducts had improved greatly. Although he still couldn't understand many things related to emotions, at least his mood wasn't affected that much from them. In addition, there were also other reasons as to why he stayed on Jingmen Island, which was the issue about the two islands in the waters to the south. One of the two islands was used to rear fierce beasts, and the other was for medicinal herbs plantation. Each of these two issues was equally important. Those children he fostered would grow up in the future and would become more powerful as well. All of which would make the needed cultivation resources to grow into an astronomical number. He would undoubtedly be in a short supply of resources if he were to rely solely on the wild herbs grown on Earth. Suddenly, his expression slightly shifted. He ceased his train of thought as his eyes shifted to the southern waters. He could sense a particular aura that was deliberately transmitted out from that direction. It was very brief, only for a few seconds, but he chose to fly to the south the moment after. Tang Shou. Shui Yu, who also sensed that aura, caught up with him riding her immortal sword. Did you feel it too? asked Tang Shou. Don't you think that it's a bit familiar? No, Shui Yu shook her head. Tang Xiao could only sigh inwardly. Shui Yu hadn't yet experienced the struggles in such a brutal place that was the immortal world, after all. She lacked the experience of battling celestials, immortals, and demons, so her sensing ability to recognize others' aura was very poor, whereas he already knew who was coming the moment he sensed that aura. Turbulent waves rippled over the sea surface of the boundless ocean. However, a blob of raging flame was actually burning above the sea. After flying high in the sky for some time, Tang Xiao and Shui Yu appeared tens of kilometers away above the deep ocean. There, they saw the fire Chilin traversing on the sea surface and seemed to look at them. You came. The fire Chilin didn't look at Shui Yu and had its eyes fixated on Tang Xiao, using its divine sense to transmit its voice to him. I knew that you'd come for me sooner or later, Fire Chilin. Tang Xiao smiled and said, Well, I didn't expect you to find me this fast, though. Anyways, there's something I've been very curious about, though. What exactly is your origin? And why did you choose to be at the human side when we fought those demonic beasts? I don't think there's a need for you to know my origin, though I'm sure you already have some guesses. Anyhow, I need to leave Earth and return to the immortal world, which means I need that spatial teleportation array. All the demon cores obtained by humans went to you and I didn't get any piece of it. The fire Chilin's body was covered by a high-temperature flame, so high that it increased the temperature of the surrounding sea in no time. Even the sea surface where the fire Chilin was standing on was boiling and made a lot of fish and shrimps cooked and float to the surface. I already know you want to go back to the immortal world, Fire Chilin, replied Tang Xiao indifferently. But as I told you, I have a way to bring you back there, but it's not now. I told you before that I still have tons of things not done here, while my own power has yet to reach the point of breaking through into the immortal stage. That's why I need you to be patient and wait for me. I'll naturally inform you when I'm ascending to the immortal world. But... But what? asked Fire Chilin. You should know clearly well that it's very difficult to enter the immortal world, said Tang Xiao indifferently. The energy needed is enormous, and the process is riddled with dangers. So if you don't explain your situation in the immortal world and why you came to Earth, it's very difficult for me to trust you. The Fire Chilin fell into silence. 
It knew that Tang Xiao was right, yet it still felt very reluctant to tell outsiders of the things that had happened. However, for the sake of returning to the immortal world, it decided to disclose some bits to this human. I'm the guardian immortal beast of a certain sect in the immortal world. My status is equal to the other four guardian beasts, the azure dragon, vermilion bird, white tiger, and black tortoise. The founder of this immortal sect was an earthling, so he left behind some countermeasures back when he was about to ascend to the god's realm. He felt that his birthplace, earth, was going to face an immense crisis, so I, azure dragon, vermilion bird, white tiger, and black tortoise rushed here to protect this planet. Tang Xiao's complexion changed and he spoke in a deep tone, that's ridiculous. The three big schools, which are the Azure Dragon Holy Sect, White Tiger Holy Sect, and Black Tortoise Holy Sect have disappeared in the immortal world hundreds of thousands of years ago. Only the Vermilion Bird Holy Sect still remains. And yet, there's no record about this matter in the Myriad Vault Pavilion whatsoever. There's no such thing related to the Vermilion Bird Holy Sect as you just told me. The Fire Chilin's aura suddenly rose. Its eyes were locked on Tang Xiao and it stopped conversing by transmitting its thought with divine sense, shouting, Who exactly are you? How do you know the matters in the immortal world and those four big holy sects? Tang Xiao unleashed his own aura to resist the Fire Chilin's pressure. He coldly hummed and said, I know you're very powerful, Fire Chilin. But don't think I'm afraid of you. It's very easy for me if I want to kill you. Take back your aura since I don't want to cause other troubles. While speaking, he gently raised his left hand and forced the star devourer insect out of his finger, letting it fly up and land on his shoulder. The fire Chilin hadn't been aware of it at first. But when the star devourer insect landed on Tang Xiao's shoulder, it cried out, Damn, abominable star devourer insect. How is this damn race not extinct yet? Tang Xiao could tell that the fire Chilin was afraid of the star devourer insect. Then, he said apathetically, Let's spare ourselves from talking about anything related to the star devourer insect, shall we? Just speak. What's your origin? Knowing too much will only make you die without a burial place. The fire Chilin shook its head and added, I just want to return to the immortal world. I have no malice toward you whatsoever. Don't force me to answer anymore, for I'll still tear you apart even though you're being protected by this abominable star devourer insect. Tang Xiao frowned. He could tell the fire Chilin's determination and felt somewhat helpless inside. Honestly speaking, this fire Chilin had piqued his curiosity, and he wouldn't be able to have a good sleep for several days if he couldn't get what he wanted to know. Suddenly, his expression shifted and he immediately made several gestures towards the fire Chilin. The fire Chilin stared at Tang Xiao's gestures with fixed eyes. Its aura intensified once again as it roared a few times. Then, it excitedly burst into laughter. You're a disciple of the Vermilion Bird Holy Sect? That's really unexpected. <laughs> to think that I can meet a disciple of my section I, Raven's Hell, a Fire Chilin, am so glad. This proves the Vermilion Bird Holy Sect hasn't been destroyed. Huh? What do you mean? asked Tang Xiao in a deep voice. The Fire Chilin retracted its aura and approached Tang Xiao much closer, saying, the sect of five beasts was the most powerful immortal sect in the immortal world hundreds of thousands of years ago. It was founded by my master. The sect of five beasts was once a famous colossus that overawed the entire immortal world, demon realm, monster realm, spirit realm, underworld, and many others. My master, Emperor Qing, was a sovereign that was on the superior throne and overlooked myriad of races and all walks of life. Some even said that the sovereign was not even inferior to some true deities. That's nonsense. Tang Xiao snapped. The Emperor Qing is indeed the founder of my Vermilion Bird Holy Sect, but the sect's name is not the sect of five beasts like you told me. Just let me finish my words, will you? You'll naturally know about the origin of the Vermilion Bird Sect. Fire Chilin shook its head and continued. 
The sect of five beasts became the most powerful sect in the immortal world after hundreds of thousands of years, feared by the rest of the sects in existence. But before Master ascended to the God's realm, he divided the sect of five beasts into five independent sects, which were the Chilean Holy Sect, Asher Dragon Holy Sect, Vermilion Bird Holy Sect, White Tiger Holy Sect, and Black Tortoise Holy Sect. I was the guardian immortal beast of Chilean Holy Sect, whereas Azure Dragon, Vermilion Bird, White Tiger, and Black Tortoise were separately acting as guardian beasts for each of their respective sections. And yet, extreme prosperity will eventually decline as the old Chinese adage said. After Master ascended, the five sects lost the most powerful supreme as their patron, and eventually caused a lot of other forces to set their eyes onto us. An earth-shaking battle then occurred in the immortal world a few hundred thousand years ago. Various forces attacked the sects of five beasts and the latter were eventually defeated, causing them to decline into ordinary immortal sects in the immortal world. The late five great holy sects that were formed then gradually moved to some secluded and hidden places. If I remember correctly, Azure Dragon, White Tiger, and Black Tortoise have all died leaving only me and Vermilion Bird behind. But I took the descendants of Azure Dragon, White Tiger, Black Tortoise, and Vermilion Bird as per the instructions Master commanded previously, that was to head to Earth and to protect his hometown. Tang Xiao stared at the fire Chilin with a disbelieving look. Never once had he ever dreamed that the Vermilion Bird Holy Sect still had such a secret inside story. It never occurred to him that the fire Chilin had been protecting Earth for hundreds of thousands of years. Then, where are the other immortal holy sects now, fire Chilin? Where they have gone, exactly? I've been in the immortal world for ten millenniums. Yet, I've never heard of the Chilin holy sect, Azure Dragon sect, White Tiger holy sect, and Black Tortoise holy sect at all asked Tang Xiao in a deep voice after taking a deep breath to weather his stirring emotions. I don't know much about any later events either. Fire Chilin shook its head and said, Ever since we arrived on Earth, we've been guarding this planet. We've been able to protect Earth even though it was nearly destroyed a couple of times. It was a pity that Azure Dragon, White Tiger, Vermilion Bird, and Black Tortoise who came along with me at that time were too young and much weaker. They eventually died after hundreds of thousands of years. I'm the only one who survives with a feeble existence to the present. Tang Xiao nodded without a word. Although he wasn't clear about most of the story narrated by Fire Chilin, he was crystal clear of one issue. The first ancestor who founded the Vermilion Bird Holy Sect was called Emperor Qing. Then, please go back first, Fire Chilin. I remember what you told me and I'll naturally take you with me to the Vermilion Bird Holy Sect to determine your status after we've returned to the immortal world. If your claim is true, then we are on the same side. Tang Shou said. Fire Chilin gave it a thought for a moment. Then, it suddenly spoke, I have a way to prove what I said, actually. With what and how do you plan to verify it, exactly, asked Tang Shou with narrowed eyes. The fire Chilin raised its head and said aloud, I know the name of the guardian immortal beast of your vermilion bird holy sect. I think there should only be a handful of immortals in the immortal world who know her name, right? Tang Xiao was shaken inwardly and replied in a deep voice, I can vouch that those who know her name in the entire immortal world is but a handful. And I'm one of them.